Hello and good day. We are down to three teams left to introduce for VCT Pacific Ascension 2024. And this time it is going to be Boom Esports representing Indonesia. Boom Esports is another team that is returning to the Ascension stage. They were also into the semifinals last year at Ascension 2023 in Bangkok and unfortunately lost to the eventual winners, Bleed Esports. Obviously, if you've been following kind of Pacific or APAC Valorant at all, uh, Indonesia is a very, very strong region. Uh, I mean, we have a lot of strong Indonesian players, right, on the likes of Paper Rex. Um, there's a lot of cracked aimers. I, I mean, there's a, a lot of Indonesian players in VCT Pacific overall. And so it's no surprise that they're always one of the teams and regions that people have a lot of hope for. The big question is, is Boom Esports, can they come back and do one better than last year? Go all the way to the end. Well, let's take a look at the roster that's aiming to do it. Representing Boom Esports and also Challengers Indonesia this year at Ascension 2024, it will be Famous, or in-game it seems going by Famous Zin now, uh, Shiro, NC Slasher, Zespiu, and Berserks. As you can probably tell from their profile pictures, uh, three of them are remaining players from last year's Ascension tournament. So just like now Esports, the core, right? More than half of this team has stepped onto the Ascension stage last year and tasted those tears of disappointment directly themselves. Uh, of course, the two missing players are actually Blaze King, who eventually moved on to VCT Pacific by joining Global Esports, and Severine, who had taken a brief stint in South Asia by joining The Revenant. But to replace those two, this team brought in NC Slasher and ZSBU. Now, both of these players are coming in directly from Bigatron Arctic, one of the rival organizations that Boom Esports was competing with. Uh, and both of them are also OGs in the Valorant scene. I mean, both of them have been playing like way back when, since the very beginning of Southeast Asian Valorant. And they've played on various teams like Boom Esports itself, Onyx G in the past for NC Slasher, Team SMG all the way back for SBW or SBU. Uh, these are players that have been around and they've all been around the top level of Indonesian Valorant since the very beginning. So Boom Esports is looking to continue that pedigree to be the highest team, the strongest team in Indonesia. The roles are also pretty straightforward. You've got Famous who is just playing Jet and Rays. Um, Neon's pretty popular these days, don't care. ISO got buffed, don't care. Yoru now being played as kind of a primary duelist, still don't care. Gonna go with the Jet and Rays. It's just the two that we saw him play in Split 2, uh, and just the very, very traditional dive duelist. Then you got Shiro, who is a bit of a flex, right? Oftentimes, a lot of these teams, right, if they ever need that second controller or the second Viper, and the main controller switches over to something else, that's where the flex comes in a lot of the times. But other than that, mostly playing the more traditional traditional initiator so things like the sova right the hard recon uh, initiator nc slasher is going to be the primary initiator in that case uh kind of being the one-stop tool for everything for both info and flashes so you've got things like the ko the gecko the fade was sbu controller all right i mean <laughs> this isn't against anything sbu but it's just the current meta enough said we've been there done that and then berserks sentinel also only playing two agents right just the standard cypher and killjoy sentinel so i mean this team's very straightforward in the agents play in the agents they play and the roles they play uh and they are just here to play some darn good valorant so what was the road back to ascension like for boom esports well i would say it was pretty smooth they started as a strong favorite right a strong contender in the indonesian region just given the you know, reputation of the team, you still had a core, you picked up two OGs. I mean, everything looked like it was in Boom Esports' favor, although there was a lot of hype behind Alter Ego as they picked up Ray 4C, you know, one of the famous Ray streamers now trying to show his prowess on the pro level. But during the group stages of the very beginning of split one boom esports just kind of cruised through they went undefeated and looked like okay boom esports is already primed and ready to go alter ego wasn't done just yet though they strike back in the playoffs of split one and they actually eventually take down boom esports twice to make sure that the title does not go into their hands so split one wraps up with alter ego taking a 3-0 victory against boom esports I mean, this was pretty big news, right? I mean, not just because of Ray 4C, but okay, like Boom Esports no longer the kind of go-to top of Indonesia. 
So then we return with Split 2, and Boom Esports comes back in peak form. In fact, they don't drop a single map during the round robin stage, leading all the way into the playoffs. However, a little bit of deja vu returns as Alter Ego actually knocks down Boom Esports into the lower bracket once again. And suddenly it looks like, okay, maybe there's going to be trouble on the horizon. Boom Esports, they're still able to get all the way through the lower bracket, win out in the lower finals against ARF team, and then they get their rematch against Alter Ego in the grand finals for that one ticket to get to Ascension 2024. There's a lot of similarities here with the Nowis video because once again, it is a crazy best of five. No overtimes in this one, but it still does go the entire distance, the full five maps. And eventually, it's going to be Boom Esports who is able to hold on just enough to cruise through with the momentum and make sure they secure victory to get to Ascension for a shot at joining VCT Pacific. Watching these matches, Indonesian Valorant is still Indonesian Valorant. It's aggressive it's crazy it's firefights non-stop nobody backs down i mean you know this is a lot of where the w gaming comes from uh it's it's very very aggressive and that hasn't changed for boom esports now last year again very similar story to now esports this was part of the trouble is that they would want to fight 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 and if the opponent team doesn't give them that opportunity then things would get a little tough but last year they had you know, the likes of Blaze King, who are able to just anchor down and say, all right, all right, reel it, reel it back in, calm down, everybody. Like, all right, I'll hold down the site. We're going to be okay. Uh, but the question is, is can Boom Esports kind of do better than that this year with the roster changes? I will say, um, we didn't see as much overheating as I thought I might see, at least not in the grand finals. Uh, I mean, famous going in on that duelist, I, he's been someone who I've heard the name of for so long, and obviously now we've seen quite a few times in various stages on the bigger stages, but a lot of times I still couldn't help but feel that there were there were these moments where something would just get lost and famous would start just going in a bit too hard into the paint. It still happens, as is the nature for any duelist, but I would say that I actually saw many more rounds this time around where he is able to just say, all right, I got to wait for my teammate, right? That's the secure, you know, that's the secure way to get to victory. Uh, I'm going to wait for the utility. I'm going to time things with my team. Uh, and that sounds great. I mean, overall, it definitely doesn't look unorganized. It looks quite well organized. In fact, I mean, the set plays, the tactics are all there, but that's the real deal is that this is a team that's focused on the tactics, right? How to win each skirmish. That's their strong suit. It's not so much this super 4D chess macro mind game. I mean, there's definitely some macro play, especially within each round, but it's much more about, okay, this time we're going to fight here. It's going to be a 3v3 or a 3v4. Here's our util. Bam, 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 bam. Go in, get friends, get trades. Great. We win the round. I mean, that's the color of Boom Esports. So the question is for Boom Esports, can they perform those similar types of plays at the same level against the best teams of other regions? I mean, there's this is a twofold question because one is, are you mechanically skilled enough that these will just get you by, right? Without needing even deeper kind of mind games and things like that. But second, can you just be consistent enough when maybe the opponent teams are now a bit stronger, puts a little bit more pressure on you? On that note, my two key players to watch here for Boom Esports are now going to be Famous, the primary duelist, and Shiro, the initiator slash flex. Famous not only is getting picked because he's the primary duelist for this team and he's a very, very skilled player, but for me, I've been told so many times that Famous is it. Famous is going to be the next big star for Indonesian Valor. And I mean, he's already a star within Indonesia, but I've been told time and time again that Famous is going to break into the global stage. He's going to become the big thing. He's going to be so good for so many teams. And I believe it when I watch his matches regionally, but I just haven't seen enough when they go to a bigger stage like Ascension or Champions to be like... Like that dude, like somebody needs to be picking him up or this team needs to make it through Ascension so we can see how much more he can do on a bigger stage. I just haven't seen him perform well enough on bigger stages consistently enough. And now you're getting another shot. You're getting another chance. So you really have to bring something home this time around. Uh, and I know I just mentioned champions and probably some of you are like, what? Famous was at champions? Yeah, Boom Esports was actually at champions way back when, when Flipstrider and Xfero were still on that team. And Famous was part of that roster. So 
alongside berserks so it's going to be on famous to say okay i'm the primary duelist but i need to make sure i don't overheat i need to make sure i'm winning with my team to make sure that we're not only putting up good numbers and good performances but we want to lift that trophy and get to vct pacific now the good news is is that his performance in split two in challengers indonesia was incredible i, I mean just insane statistics all the way around for famous right overall in the entire tournament we're looking at the chart right now you have near Nearly a 1.5 kill death ratio without the assist. You've got an average of nearly a 280 ACS. All very, very good. You have the highest kills per round as well at pretty much at 1.0, right? So a kill every single round of the entire tournament. Very, very high first kills per round as well. If I'm not mistaken, yep. It's going to be at the top as well. So, I mean, you're doing everything you want your duelist to do and more. Because I always say the duelist doesn't always need to get the kills as long as there's value off of the space they create or, you know, the deaths that they take. But, hey, if you're going in and getting kills, like, that's a, that's a great bonus. Like, if your duelist, if your entry is able to go in and get kills consistently... Like, you are getting rounds gifted to you. That's the way I see it. And Famous is doing that he did that this year in split two in challengers indonesia so as long as there's no mental blocks i hope that this is the tournament that famous can really convince everyone around the world that everyone needs to be watching him that we need to be looking out for what more he can do now alongside famous it's going to be shiro that i'm looking out for and maybe sometimes this goes hand in hand of course with the positions that they play but shiro was a monster when it came to the grand finals and also right alongside uh it's going to be famous right alongside famous putting up very very respectable numbers for the entire season but let's just note that shiro goes plus 14 overall in this full best of five now this seems a little overshadowed by the plus 29 from his sbu which is also insane but i mean sure it was fragging out getting so many impactful multi kills holding so many good positions getting so many good trades and just locking things down never really allowing you know maybe the first death of their team or losing a member to just spiral out of control. Shiro's kind of there to just stem the bleeding immediately and shut things down. I mean, both him and Famous, coincidentally, getting aces in the grand finals too. So obviously two great fraggers on this team. And I'm looking forward to see what Shiro can do to add that stability for Famous so Famous doesn't have to feel the pressure to overperform. Taking a look at the maps, and boy, do we need to take a look at their maps because look at this. 8 and 0 on a cent? 8 and 0 on a cent? 8 zero? 8 game win streak on a cent. 57% attacking round win rates. I mean, 62% on defense on a cent. It's good, but it's not, like, shocking. But, boy, oh, boy. I mean, this is this is a map that may maybe you don't pick... A, you don't leave open against these guys. I, I mean, they're they're playing the standard comp. So it's not anything crazy. There's not much more to read into it. They are just good at shutting you down. They're just good at winning their fights. Uh, and I don't know what else to tell you about that. Avoid it if you're going up against Boom Esports, I guess. But where else do you go? Uh, what, the 5-0 Lotus? You know, the 3-0 the Icebox? I mean, all of these maps look pretty good for Boom Esports. I actually think overall this might be some of the more dominant-looking map pools that we've seen because they've also played so many uh, games on all of these maps. The only one they haven't really is Haven. They end up playing that in the Grand Finals against Alter Ego. You know, not necessarily of their choice. And it doesn't go so well, but it's the one time. And they lose out against Alter Ego on that game, so... I'm not going to count that against them too much, although the uh, the win rates are pretty atrocious on both the attacking and defending side. But at the end of the day, it's just it's a very, very small sample size. So I wouldn't read into it too much, but let's say that's your weak map. Okay, you have Haven that's weak, and then I guess Abyss is still in the works. But out of the other maps that aren't 100%, it's 75% win rates for Bind and Sunset. 3-1 records and very, very good numbers. I mean, Lotus has 78% attacking round win rate. I don't care if it's attacking sided, if it's attacker sided. Nearly 80% attacking round win rate? Like, you're not stopping that. I, I mean, this is an insane spreadsheet of, of win rates here. 78% on defense for Icebox. I, I mean... The draft is a bit of a headache, and so I think outside of Ascent, you kind of just have to pray and hope that one of your strong suits is not Icebox or Lotus, because 
then it's kind of a Hail Mary, it feels, right? Because it seems like it's such a comfort position for this team. On top of that, they were playing the uh, KO Silva comp, right? The quote-unquote Ascent comp with Cypher on Abyss. And I wonder if they were just doing that just to make sure that they could be playing it in split two. But maybe, again, given how much they love to fight, maybe they'll come up with different compositions coming into Ascension. I don't know, but that could very well be it. So uh, there isn't much to pick on for this team, you know, in their map pool. I guess the only one is, you know, the Haven. It didn't look it didn't look great. It didn't look that convincing. I mean, they started off actually in the grand finals with uh I think a three round or four round win streak and then it went all south from there. So, if it wasn't for that, if they didn't win the bonus, that uh that win rate would be even lower. The round win rates would be even lower. But outside of Haven, there's not much to pick on. And you you watch the games, and again, it's because this team is kind of tactics-based. It's like, we want to fight A main. Okay, there's three different ways we're going to fight A main. Here's how the util works, and then we swing out, we trade, and then we, we win with the numbers, uh, we win with the firepower. And when you're playing like that, unless the other team is very, very good at getting reads off of that and kind of pulling out all your util and putting you into bad positions... Then it just comes down to the condition of the day. And I mean, the way Boom Esports has been performing this year, and given that they're also a returning team, I expect them to be in tip top shape. Also, it's happening in Indonesia. So, like, there's a lot of, I just thought about that. There's a lot of things going in Boom Esports' favor. So, yeah, uh, you're being, you're going to be playing in your home crowd, in front of your home crowd. Uh, you are looking like one of the favorites once again. You look very strong. You also have a very, very uh, experienced roster this time around, right? You've got people who played at Ascension last year. You've got people who've been playing since the very, very early dawn of Southeast Asian Valorant. All, all the stars are aligning for Boom Esports. And I dare say, if you're a fan of Indonesian Valorant or Boom Esports... I, maybe you give them a lot of hope one more time. Like, I know a lot of you probably had a lot of hope for them last year, but maybe it's time to give them more hope once again because it's all pointing in that direction. I think Boom Esports could come in and just light it up on fire and go through, plays through, try to make it all the way to the trophy and get into VCT Pacific 2025. Now, having covered both of these teams, I'm really excited for Naos versus Boom Esports. That's going to be an absolute banger. But that means we now only have two teams remaining. So in the meantime, if you have been following Boom Esports, if you're a fan of the Indonesian scene, let me know down in the comments below. How highly are you rating this team? What do you expect to see from Boom Esports? How hyped up are you for the potential that they could go all the way? All right, I'll stop right there. I won't curse it any further. And of course, if you enjoy the video, make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel as we have two more teams that we are looking to cover before Ascension kicks off. And the last two are going to be the two teams that represent Malaysia, Singapore, and then Japan, Disguised and Riddle Order. We'll return with those teams next time. I'll see you then.